Welcome back. Now, a growing number of players are entering the lucrative business aviation sector in the Middle East. But how has the industry fared over the last 18 months? And how are established players staying ahead of the game? Well, to discuss this, I earlier met with Shane O'Hare, the president and CEO of Royal Jet at the Middle East Business Aviation Show, currently underway in Dubai. Thank you very much for having us on board today. It's very Thank kind you. of you. Um, so to start off with, how has the private jet industry in the Middle East fared over the past year? Mm. It's, um, of course, with the global downturn, um, the whole industry has been affected. Uh, the US, of course, was the worst affected with uh, the corporate market and Europe has been affected some, some up to about 20 to 30 percent downturn in the business. Middle East because there has been strong underlying growth and it's a less developed market than the European and uh, US markets has not been so badly affected. Um, the corporate markets come off about 20%. Um, but here at Royal Jet we have a very balanced portfolio of customer segments. So we have um, government business, we have corporate business, we have medical business, um, high net worth individual business. So across the board we've taken a, a bit of a hit in uh, the corporate area, um, but it, across the other areas, and in some areas it's actually grown. Um, I think most people will notice that there have been so many more global meetings and the need for particularly high-level government and country delegations to get together over the last crisis period, yeah. which of course in turn has caused uh, quite an upturn in some segments for, for Royal Jet. So in, in, it has, um, the, the overall growth has not been there the last two years, but certainly the, um, the, the market's been relatively stable for us in the balance. Definitely. So in terms of sort of like the f future growth, what, what's next for Royal Jet? Well, we, we have obviously a, a long-term uh, strategic plan and uh, we, we are regarded very much in the Middle East as the benchmark and, and globally actually as one of the uh, finest private jet uh, operations in the world. So for us, it's the challenge is always to how do we maintain and uh, set continually, continually set the benchmark for, for private jet travel. Um, you see here today a good example of this with our uh, Boeing business jet, of which we're now the, the largest, uh, by far the largest operator of uh, these large VIP aircraft in the world. Incredible. Where we have an extraordinary technology in this aircraft, um, which is actually even more advanced than most people's uh, homes. So what sort of technological advances are you seeing come into the market and what are you showcasing here today as well? Certainly. Well, on this aircraft, of course, you have all the, all the normal features. You see um, this is a derivative of the 737 aircraft, which in normal commercial use would carry about 150 to 160 passengers. Um, this configuration is uh, 40 passengers only. Um, and of course uh, we don't call them passengers, we call them VIPs in of our course. business. Uh, we have uh, the fully flat uh, uh, beds with all of the latest technology, of course everything's electronic. We have mood lighting uh, which can be uh, everything from very subdued lighting. Uh, you can even have a disco in here or a oh, nightclub wow. in here. Uh, we have a surround sound uh, system for uh, so you can literally sit here uh, and watch a movie in surround sound. Uh, we have mobile telephony, we have satellite telephone, wow. we have live TV as well. So as if you were watching Showtime at home, we have that facility on board. So anywhere in the world you can uh, pick up your own uh, favourite uh, television stations live anywhere. Wow, really impressive stuff, um, isn't it? We have the best, of course, the, the best trained private jet uh, crew in the world, including uh, we have in-flight chefs. So everything is tailor-made from the ground up and uh, for, for the most discerning of, it, of our customers. Um, so in terms of challenges for the private jet industry, what, what, what are you facing at the moment? Well, of course, um, there is always uh, increased competition in the marketplace. And of course, we welcome competition. It, it keeps, uh, keeps the industry healthy. Um, there, are, there are some unsavory elements of the uh, private uh, jet business uh, an area called the grey market which is the illegal uh, chartering of uh, aircraft oh, really? of, of private owners right. um, and that is uh, quite prevalent in some areas in the Middle East but the government authorities are working to stamp that out. 
Um, is, that, is that quite a big, um, a big issue at the moment, is it? It is a big issue, particularly in markets like Saudi Arabia. And uh, this is something that uh, we're working with the authorities and MIBRA is working on the authorities to, uh, to reduce this um, because there's very high risk involved in this kind of activity. Uh, there's the normal, um, n normal uh, risks of the, the, the global market conditions, um, uh, airport space, um, all of the things that uh, the aviation industry faces, uh, rising fuel prices, all of those things. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but uh, the good thing about Royal Jet is that we're able to, by uh, being the leader in the market, we, we're, we're continually look, looking at ways of improving the industry generally. Um, and improving the business overall. Excellent. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it from the business desk. You can contact us, though, at ib at city7tv.com. Up next, Natasha Thomas is back with the details of the RTA agreement with Public Transport Authority of Paris. <laughs>